Today, I wanted to compare two very unique and very special full-size luxury sedans, the Hyundai Equus and the Lexus LS 460. The models that I'm going to be comparing today are going to be the 2016 model years because 2016 was the final model year of the Equus and the LS 460, the generation I'm talking about, ranged between 2013 to 2017. However, the Equus, the first model year of that car, was 2011, so it technically came out during the same time as the previous generation LS 460 from 07 to 2012, but we're not going to be talking about that. We're going to be comparing it to the more modern LS 460 because these are the two last naturally aspirated V8 full-size luxury sedans that you can buy. Brand new, the Equus started at around $63,000 and the LS 460 started at around $73,000. So there was about a $10,000 delta between the two cars. And even in the used market, that trend continues. If you want a relatively clean 2016 LS 460 with around 40 some odd thousand miles, you're gonna be looking at, at around $40,000. For the equivalent model year and mileage Equus, it's around $30,000. So the Equus is the greatest deal in the flagship luxury car segment, the used luxury car segment. Let's talk about the engines first. So with the Equus, we have here a five liter V8 engine producing 429 horsepower and 376 pounds feet of torque with premium fuel. The LS 460 produces 386 horsepower and 367 pounds feet of torque and that horsepower actually goes down a little bit when you get the all-wheel drive model, but it's not a big deal. You don't really notice it. And that's one of the biggest advantages with the LS460. It actually comes with all-wheel drive, whereas the Equus never came with all-wheel drive. And the LS460 also requires premium fuel. So that's the other thing. If, you're, if you are an owner of either of these cars, make sure to put premium fuel in these vehicles if you want them to last a long time because that's what the manufacturer recommends. But after driving both cars, is the Equus faster? Yes, it is to the point where you actually have to turn off the traction control to properly make use of that car because I am not a fan of the Equus and its traction control system. It really limits the, the car to the point where when you're at a standstill and you just floor it, it, there's a massive delay with it. But once I turn the traction control off, everything is fine and it does move rather rapidly. It has some great top end power, which shows because it's got a little bit more horsepower than the LS460. And both vehicles use a eight speed automatic transmission and both do a fine job shifting. However, I think I like the, the eight speed in the LS just a tad bit more. Another thing to note, the LS460 weighs 4,233 pounds. That's the base curb weight as opposed to 4,553 pounds for the base model or the signature trim of the, the Equus. So let's talk about handling next. The LS460 actually does have a tad bit of a sharper handling demeanor than the Equus. However, out on the road when you're just driving normally, both the Equus and the LS460 drive identical. Like they have the exact same demeanor, the exact same ride quality, the same level of quietness and isolation. It's pretty remarkable how equal the Equus is with the LS460 from just a daily driving perspective. I, I was just astonished. It was an absolute ditto copy of the LS460. The same mannerisms, that same buttery LS demeanor, the Equus copied that to a T and I'm, and I'm shocked by that. However, once you push the cars a little bit more, I did notice that the LS460 handles a little bit better and that's just the normal LS460. I've never driven the F Sport variant and I don't really have to, but you can kind of see how the F Sport variant would be a little bit sharper still. So if you like driving, well, maybe go with the LS460, but you know, hot blooded, hot tempered driving is not what these cars are about. In fact, it's not even befitting of the character of either of these cars to drive foot to the floor. There's no real reward to driving either car in such a fashion. They're both big bruiser type cars that you just comfortably chill in really the power and the the capabilities of both of these cars it's really there as a luxury like it's just there if you need it type of thing but the thing with the equus is you really have to turn off the trash control to get the most use out of it from an interior standpoint the equus is 
far superior. However, both of them are equal in terms of build quality, solidity. Nothing is really going to creak and rattle with either of these cars. These are both flagship vehicles. So yes, the Equus is a true flagship. Same with the Lexus. But here's the thing with Lexus. Even their lower end vehicles like the ES feels great. It's always going to be well made with Lexus. You pretty much know what you're getting there. But the Equus does feel a little bit more up to date. All of the features that it has, the infotainment, the camera systems, far more advanced, far more premium feeling in the Equus. You just feel like you have more toys to, to play with. And that's even with the signature model. You're going to be getting the blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert. All that good stuff is going to be standard with the Equus. And when you upgrade the Equus to the ultimate package, that's when you get... Uh, the cooled seats, a couple of screens in the back to play with, and a larger digital gauge cluster screen, and a couple of other things. And also with the LS460, you can upgrade to the L model. So there is no L model with the Equus. It's just an extended wheelbase car from the factory. But the LS kind of has that option of getting the shorter wheelbase if you like to drive more. But even though I personally don't have an issue with the Lexus infotainment system, many people seem to hate it. I certainly don't hate it, but in this instance, when you're comparing it directly to Hyundai's excellent 9.2 inch infotainment, the infotainment in the Hyundai is just far superior. Easier to use, very quick to respond, not an issue. It's clean in the way that it's laid out it's built into the uh, into the dash but i also don't have an issue using the ls460 screen i would say the mark levinson is a little bit superior to the equus the uh, the lexicon i mean they're, they're both about equal they're both pretty much the the top level audio systems that you can pretty much get in any car actually but certain design layouts like the uh, the door panel of the ls460 i kind of like that swoopy design nature of the ls460 door panels more so than the equus same thing with their fancy wood they they use a very uh, special wood in the ls 460s as well and in terms of space you know it's got gobs of space in both vehicles you can be a very tall individual both in the front and the rear fit comfortably that's not an issue both cars have massive trunks that's not an issue with either of these flagship vehicles and a couple of other things to talk about so the mpgs the miles per gallon it's 16 in the city and 23 on the highway for the ls460 and for the equus it's 15 in the city and 23 in the highway so one mpg lower in the city for the equus and those are pretty accurate figures you might be able to do one or two mpg higher uh, out on the highway for just cruising in both vehicles and let's talk about the exterior and of course prestige next so exterior i mean it's really up to you the individual watching because styling is always going to be subjective me personally i kind of like the way the ls460 especially in the f sport trim i really like the way that car looks however the equus at least it doesn't look stupid the first generation genesis car really looked dumb but the equus with its proportions the the long wheelbase the the big body demeanor of it i think it's been captured extremely well in the equus design it's actually very clean and i like it i think it looks better in the darker colors like black or like a dark brown type of color i think that suits the equus extremely well some people don't like the spindle grill on the uh on the lexus cars it's whatever but of course you have the issue of prestige nobody's gonna care nobody's gonna be your friend nobody's gonna talk to you because you drive an equus it's got no swagger it's got no appeal it's got none of that going on you literally buy the equus for you you buy it solely so you can enjoy the opulence that it provides especially for its price new and used the ls is a lexus lexus has a genuine level of prestige and value in society it's maybe not quite as prestigious as the bmws the audis and the benzes but whatever it's nearly it's up there and it's actually probably the most prestigious amongst the japanese rivals like acura and infinity but even acura infinity you know these brands have more brand cachet than hyundai and genesis ever will however i will say this genesis is catching on because they have been making non-stop incredible cars back to back for many years now and they've improved their design along the way like the g90 that came after the equus it takes a dump on both the equus and the ls460 neither of these cars can hold a candle the ls500 cannot touch the g90 from 2017 and beyond that car is so epic i've said this multiple times it's the only car to come close to the w222 
S-Class Mercedes, the S550 I tested. That's pinnacle luxury sedan. I'll give it that. But the G90 is not far behind. In fact, the distance between the S-Class and the G90 is very little, actually. That's how incredible and well-engineered the G90 is. The Equus and the LS460, they're good cars in their own right, standalone for the price that they're going for. Well, actually, no, the, the G90 can be had for around $40,000 as well. So I would easily take the G90 over the LS460 all day long. But also this chip shortage has also helped out Genesis in terms of its brand cachet because a lot of people who put their orders in for a European car, like a BMW or an Audi, they're having extremely long wait times. So they just cancel those orders and now they look for something different. And now they've ended up at Genesis. And now Genesis has supply chain issues due to the demand for their vehicles because sales have really gone up. And I'm starting to see more Genesis cars out on the road now. It's becoming more accepted. It's becoming a lot like the Japanese brands now. And you're starting to see a lot of Hyundais and Kias running around as well because they're priced well and they give people what they want. Big screens, lots of features, safety tech, a lot of that stuff. It's standard. You don't have to pay extra for it. So I admit the, the brand cachet, it's it's changing, but the Equus is still denoted with the, the Hyundai nameplate. So, you know, again, that, that doesn't matter. You're buying this used and for yourself and at 30 grand for a clean Equus, 2016 model year, the last model year of the Equus, that's pretty insane value. And that's about 10 grand less than the equivalent LS. I'm choosing that all day long. Plus it came with a monster warranty, a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty. The only thing you have to make sure with the Hyundai Genesis products is you have to make sure that you have a quality Hyundai dealership near you. If you don't, you're screwed. You need a warranty with both of these cars, with the Hyundai and the Lexus. They're very complicated, very expensive cars. They're near six figure cars. They are flagship machines, plenty of electronics to ruin you financially. So. Do not touch either of these cars without a warranty. But that's the thing with Lexus, you're getting a far superior dealership experience there. With Hyundai, you really gotta do your research and find a good quality Hyundai dealership. Same thing with the G90 as well. So for me in the used market, the whole point of buying a used car is to save money and the Equus is saving me 10 Gs. If I wanted to splurge and I wanted something more expensive, I would definitely go for the G90 in this class. But that's just my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I definitely want to hear from the owners of both of these cars. Let me know how both of these vehicles have held up for you and with that established, click on the end screen to see the next video.